Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of maternal death in the United States. Not only can it impact women during pregnancy, but it can also present issues later in life. That's why Catholic Health created the Women's Heart Wellness Program, combining two award-winning service lines to meet the needs of new and expecting moms. Today on Stronger Together, we'll learn more about this program and what it has to offer along with hearing from a woman who's directly benefiting from its services. That's coming up today on Stronger Together with Dr. Dave. Hello and welcome to Catholic Health Stronger Together with Dr. Dave. Today we're talking about the importance of women's heart health. Our first guest is Catholic Health's Associate Chairman of Women's Health and the Chairman of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Good Samaritan University Hospital, Dr. John Vulo. Thank you, John, for joining us today. And we're going to talk about something that's really, really important to all of our viewers and our own patients, and that's going to um, be something that you've been working on. It's been a passion of yours, and that's the Women's Heart Wellness Program. Um, tell us more about that. The Women's Heart Wellness Program started, it was an idea approximately seven years ago. I had gone to a conference in uh, California where they were trying to address the increased maternity, uh, mortality, and morbidity rates that are, exist in the United States. We have very bad rates here in New York State also. At the conference, there was a presentation by a Canadian group where they were studying the effects of adverse pregnancy outcomes that occur during pregnancy and using them as a stress test or a window to define women at our increased risk for cardiovascular disease. The idea intrigued me. It's something that we knew for years was real. The American Heart Association in 2011 even added adverse pregnancy outcomes as different questions that we should be asking our patients to identify which patients are at increased risk for developing cardiovascular disease. So I thought this was a great opportunity to bring this back to New York, especially Good Samaritan Hospital. We think of pregnant women as young and healthy. We don't think about, you know, diabetes and high blood pressure and heart disease, but we should be, and you are. So, so tell us more about that. So you have a patient, they go through pregnancy, and what are you looking for that may predispose them to problems later in life? So the American Heart Association identified, and we've identified in the obstetrical world, a number of outcomes, including preeclampsia, pregnancy-induced hypertension, gestational diabetes, growth restriction in the pregnancy. Um, these are all conditions that usually come out of nowhere. The patient was unexpected. These are low-risk patients initially. They get found to have these high-risk issues, get followed closely during the pregnancy. We usually warn them that in their lifetime, this may predispose them to have cardiovascular disease, but then we forget about them because normally, once the pregnancy is over, these conditions normalize. The other thing we found in pregnancy, there are a lot of symptoms that occur that forever we've told patients that's normal, it's okay. It's due to the physiologic changes that occur in pregnancy. But in reality, some of these, women's had on, some of these women had underlying disease and the symptoms they were having were not the normal pregnancy, such as palpitations, um, swelling of their hands and feet, um, different types of heart or chest pain, these are things that women took for granted while they were pregnant, but we realize are significant. What is a woman to do when she's feeling these symptoms and she's wondering, is this my heart, not my heart? How do, what's, what's the first step in, in analyzing these people? She should be communicating with her physician. We know that um, OBGYNs are trained to look at these physiologic changes and try to differentiate what's normal from what's not normal. There are certain tests we can do in the office, certain blood tests we can do that will confirm that this is a normal part of pregnancy or you're developing some type of a adverse outcome such as preeclampsia or gestational hypertension. How often do you follow them and for how long? So the program originated as a wellness program. The goal was to identify the women during pregnancy and then sending them to either our cardiology or primary care docs to evaluate them for potential risk of cardiovascular disease in the future. The problem was we started to identify that many of the women we were looking to identify later on already had underlying disease. 
we found in our year and a half of having run the program, about 15, 20% of the patients that had symptoms already had some level of underlying cardiovascular disease. And what about the program? We know it's in West Islip. Are we planning on uh, expanding it throughout Long Island? We've had such good success with it at Good Samaritan. The goal now throughout the Catholic health system is to bring it to the other places that have obstetrical units. This is fantastic and really cutting edge and um, a great service to the community. And we're excited to see how this program grows and it's definitely gonna help a lot of women. Um, Wanna thank you for joining us today. This was very um, informative. How can people reach out to you and your program if they need to? They can either contact us through Catholic Health um, or they can go to their individual OBGYNs that work at the Catholic Health facilities and they know how to get in touch with the cardio Uh, Women's Heart Wellness Program. Thank you, Dr. Vulo. Coming up next, we'll hear from one of the cardiovascular specialists at St. Francis Heart Center to hear exactly how they work with patients who are referred to the program. That's coming up next on Stronger Together with Dr. Dave. After one or two drinks, my boyfriend can't stop drinking until he drinks too much. It scares me but I don't have the money to see a counselor or a therapist about it right now. The more I think about my boyfriend's drinking, the more depressed I get. He's charming, handsome, and smart in so many ways, but when he drinks, I don't even know him. A friend of mine suggested I try Al-Anon family groups. She said it doesn't cost anything. There are no dues or fees for Al-Anon. Donations are completely voluntary. At first, I was afraid to go to Al-Anon, I felt like a fool to care about somebody who can't stop drinking. Al-Anon helps a lot. The members know how I feel and what it's like to love somebody who's totally out of control. If someone's drinking troubling you, you might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to alanon.org. Welcome back to Catholic Health Stronger Together with Dr. Dave. The Women's Heart Wellness Program is a collaboration between Catholic Health's cardiovascular disease specialists and the patient's OBGYN. Now we're going to hear from one of St. Francis Heart Center experts about their specialized care plans for maternal heart health. Did you know that African-American women have a three to four time increased risk of maternal mortality when compared to their cohorts? And that is independent of socioeconomic status and um, education level. So as a system, we need to do better. And this is why we created this cardiobstetrics clinic that focuses on cardiovascular risk mitigation for women who are at increased risk. We have patients who are preconception, who are currently pregnant, postpartum, and we actually also provide services during labor and delivery. Um, It is a multi-centric team approach to providing comprehensive care to women who at increased cardiovascular risk. Heart health is critical for women of childbearing age because pregnancy is essentially nature's stress test. A pregnant woman's body has multiple adaptations to support the growing fetus. And you can imagine if there is underlying cardiac disease that has not been previously diagnosed, it can unmask itself as the demand on the body increases. Therefore, optimizing women's health and sensitizing women, educating women about the importance of heart health and appropriate screenings is critical to reduce the risk of maternal morbidity and mortality related to cardiovascular disease, which by the way, is the number one preventable cause of maternal morbidity and mortality in the United States. States. People that concern us are those who are already having pre-existing cardiac disease. For example, an older mom in her 40s who has hypertension and diabetes has a disproportionate risk of developing preeclampsia or any hypertensive disorder related to pregnancy. Furthermore, women who have coronary disease have an increased risk of having an event during their pregnancy. Women who additionally have had preeclampsia or any hypertensive disorder related to previous pregnancies have statistically a higher risk of having recurrence of these disorders. Furthermore, what has been noted is that when women have a cardiovascular complication related to pregnancy, be it preeclampsia, eclampsia, gestational diabetes, intrauterine growth restriction, small for gestational age, These women disproportionately have an increased risk later on in life of having chronic cardiac disease, including coronary disease, heart failure, 
and cerebrovascular diseases as well. And because of that, the EHAACC has actually now included any hypertensive complication related to pregnancy as a risk factor for cardiac disease, which is very interesting because traditionally when you think of risk factors, you think of men over 50 and not women with preeclampsia. So this is a wonderful step forward in providing more access to care for women. When a patient is referred to our program, uh, when they first come in, they meet with our clinical coordinator who goes over the expectations of the program and introduces the clinical staff. Then I meet with the patient, I ask the patient, what is it that you would like from us? What concerns you? What is, what is it that brings you to our practice? After we've established what their goals are, we do a deep dive into their past medical history, a detailed obstetric history, family history, surgical history, and obviously the physical exam. After having compiled prior data from outside physicians, the current laboratory data as well, and the history that has been provided to us, we provide a comprehensive, personalized clinical plan for the patient, which at times actually includes a nutritional plan as we do have the fortune of having a program specific nutritionist. Um, and so we try to tailor the care for the person. Thanks, Dr. Agusi, for the excellent information on this wonderful program. Coming up next, I'll be joined in the studio by one of Dr. Agusi's patients who is currently enrolled in the program. You're watching Stronger Together with Dr. D. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. As farmers and ranchers, stewardship of the land comes naturally. Your work keeps our water clean, improves the soil, and enhances wildlife habitat. It also provides countless benefits, not just for you and your family, but for millions of Americans who depend on this region every day without even realizing it. Thank you for being stewards of America's prairie for all of us. Take a moment and find out how conservation pays. Visit conservationpays.org. Welcome back to Catholic Health, Stronger Together with Dr. Dave. Today, we're talking about Catholic Health's Women's Heart Wellness Program. I'm joined now by Krishana Runj, someone who can speak to this program firsthand. Krishana, thank you for joining me today. And we're gonna hear your exciting story um, from the beginning until where you are today. So, mm -hmm. so fill the viewers in on your journey. How did you initially come to be enrolled in the Women's um, Heart Wellness Program. Thank you for having me. I, I became enrolled in this program because I was a patient of Dr. Wagist um, from the year of 2018. And um, she treated me throughout a high-risk pregnancy, which I wound up in the third trimester developing preeclampsia uh, with the um, eclamptic episode uh, post-birth. So hold on one second. Preeclampsia mm -hmm. is is dangerously high blood pressure yes. during pregnancy. Yes. And it could lead to eclampsia, yes. hence preeclampsia, which is a seizure or seizure-like yes. activity. So there were um, uh, many indications that the preeclampsia was transitioned post-birth into um, this like episode where that was where it was leading. So I was put in the ICU for several weeks at Huntington Hospital where Dr. August um, was brought in on the care team via telephone call um, to help you know bring me through there, which I obviously did survive well. Um, and she treated me thereafter for continued treatment and um, various medication changes over the years following that very traumatic episode of preeclampsia. So just backing up, mm -hmm. you had high blood pressure before your pregnancy? Yes, yeah, since my mid-20s. Right, so it's mm -hmm. interesting. So you really are that type of patient that we need to pay attention to. Yes. Because as we were discussing uh, with a prior guest, Dr. Vulo, 
you know, pregnancy is a stress test. And if you have hypertension before pregnancy, there's a possibility that you can get into big trouble during mm -hmm. pregnancy, hence what you went through. What folks need to realize is that the risks that the doctors inform you of are real. Yeah. And um, I myself was um, a victim of you know, being naive and saying, oh, that's not going to happen to me. I'm very healthy. My general health was good. I thought that if I checked all the other boxes, the high blood pressure would not come into play. I was very wrong. And there's no way to back out of that situation. You just have to have the fortitude uh, and the care team to push you through to the other side. I was fortunate enough to have that, but I almost did not make it. And so it prompted me, I, I have this, you know, very strong feeling to help raise awareness, which was why when I was approached to join this wellness program, I jumped in with both feet and how do I, how do I help um, provide data? How do I help um, you know, raise awareness for other gals in the area who might experience this? I wanna tell my story, I wanna share what happened to me and help you with this program going forward. So the program, it's a holistic program. Yes. So they, of course, use traditional medicine, mm -hmm. um, but they also talk about, I'm sure, nutrition and exercise. How much of that is a role in, in your recovery and doing so well now? It, it's a, a large portion of that. Um, I would say it's a collective effort for all the, the personnel and professionals um, at, at that um, care center. Um, Dr. Oguiz definitely wrangled, you know, a wonderful team together and they all provide such a, um, a pillar of strength for each of the patients that are part of this program. I've learned a lot that I didn't, I thought I knew about myself and about my nutrition and exercise that I, that now I'm in a much better place than I was several years back. Tell the viewers a couple of things that you learned that you didn't know before. I learned that I was not I thought I was eating healthy and some of the things that I was eating wasn't quite the best. It even comes down to, I'm a very busy professional, Pot, I wasn't eating enough at times. I, and then when I was eating, I wasn't eating um, the right things. I, I thought I was exercising enough, but it, the type of exercising I was doing was not maybe the best for my heart. Or um, you can do this and, and work. So they want me to work smarter, not right. harder. <laughs> right. And so I learned valuable lessons there. This was really enjoyable, very informative, and I'm Thank sure you. people watching this are inspired by your story. I hope so. And I really appreciate you coming in. Thank you for having me. And again. sharing your story with us. Thank you. I'm very, very happy to do so. Thanks, Krishana. One of the key components to maternal heart health is a healthy diet. Up next, we'll hear from a nutrition specialist at the Women's Heart Wellness Program. Stay tuned. You're watching Stronger Together with Dr. Dave. Got your personal references, high school diploma or equivalent. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. It's right there. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. This is my new best friend, Esther. She might look like any normal, playful puppy, but Esther's being raised to become a canine companions for independence assistance dog for a person with a disability. To get there, she needs lots of loving care and attention, plenty of exercise, and good eating habits so that she can live a long and healthy life for her future family. And she needs to spend tons of time socializing, learning basic commands like sit and stay, and taken to fun places with lots of distractions so that she can learn to cope in every situation. All of this will prepare Esther for more professional training to become a real assistance dog and a life helping a person with a disability to live more independently. Are you ready to open your heart and home for 18 months to a puppy like Esther? To find out more about becoming a canine companion for Independence Puppy Raiser or about other volunteer opportunities, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Raise a puppy, change a life. You can make a world of difference in the life of a person with a disability. Welcome back. We've been learning about all of the wonderful aspects of Catholic Health's Women's Heart Wellness Program. Now we're going to learn about one of the most important parts of the program, nutrition. Kerry Patty Tripiccioni is a clinical dietitian at the Women's Heart Wellness Program, and she joins me now in the studio. Kerry, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. We, we love talking to dietitians because that's probably one of the most common questions we get asked in medicine and on the show. So let's get to it. So you are the clinical dietitian at the Women's Heart Wellness Center, 
And um, the obvious question is, we know nutrition is important for everyone, but what is special or different about uh, childbearing uh, age women? Why, why is nutrition especially important for them? Sure. So, you know, what can happen, um, especially in this country, what we've seen is there's been a lot of complications coming during pregnancy and post-delivery for the baby and the mom. And they're very much preventable things. We've found that they don't understand a lot of these women, um, the link between the maternal nutrition and health to the quality of the pregnancy and the outcome. Um, so what we've really tried to do is kind of catch these women preconception and help them really understand that their body weight can play a role in their fertility if they're severely underweight or overweight, um, helping them understand that, again, with our patient population, they come in with a cardiovascular risk factor. So they may already have an elevated blood pressure or cholesterol. When they become pregnant, these natural changes that happen with pregnancy, you know, they have a greater blood volume. So their blood pressure is going to increase slightly. They're, you know, have more cholesterol and triglyceride to support a healthy pregnancy. So if they're coming in with these elevated levels, they now can end up at a very high risk pregnancy. So we're trying preconception to get those numbers within normal range, get them as healthy as possible. Um, we also find that people don't know that they're pregnant right away. So, you know, it can be six to 12 weeks before they realize. So we want to make sure that these women really understand what their iron levels need to be, what their folic acid intake needs to look like. So if we can catch them in their childbearing age preconception, hopefully we can improve the outcomes of those pregnancies and again, have a healthy baby at the end. That's fantastic. So are you seeing patients who are having a hard time conceiving or are these patients who are just under the care of an OBGYN and they are referred to you? So these patients are have to have some cardiovascular risk factor. Okay. So they have to have either a blood pressure issue, a cholesterol issue, it could be a congenital issue. Um, so they can be preconception and having infertility issues, but there's also a cardiac component. And then of course we have pregnancy and we have postpartum as well. So excessive weight, can that make it difficult for a, a woman to conceive? Yeah, so we have seen some studies that show that weight can affect fertility. Um, and oftentimes there's other preliminary diagnoses that may lead to some of that weight gain. So a lot of these women have PCOS, which already makes them insulin resistant. And some of that also has been shown to affect fertility. So again, we try to really optimize their weight, get them to the best place possible, knowing some of these things are going to be outside their control. Fertility is not 100% in a woman's control as much as we'd love it to be. So we just just want to make sure we kind of exhaust as many options that they have control over and get their body weight in a good place and hopefully control those insulin levels too. Okay, so so we move from preconception to pregnancy. Right. What's the what are some of the uh, significant differences between how you will counsel somebody preconception and somebody who's already pregnant? Right. So with preconception, the focus is really just a balanced diet, depending if they need to lose weight, depending if they're on a low sodium diet. For pregnancy, they have increased needs. There's specific things that we have to focus on. Um, so when they come in, we really focus on making sure that they understand that they need to drink more fluid. They need to increase their protein. They need to have more calcium and iron and folic acid. So as much as they may also have that low sodium diet restriction because maybe they're struggling with preeclampsia or maybe that cholesterol is elevated and, and we need to really focus on a lower fat diet, we also need to focus on the backbone of their pregnancy, that safe nutrition, which is going to be more calcium, more iron, more protein, and, and helping them identify what those foods really look like. Now, I don't remember this. When my wife was pregnant, I don't remember being counseled <laughs> on nutrition. Right. Um, so is this a newer phenomenon? Are we more aware today with pregnant women? And I mean, the protein intake, everything you just said, I don't remember any of this. I think we were told to take a prenatal vitamin and right. call it a day. So <laughs> things have changed. That's what you're saying? Right. Some of it has definitely changed. We have a target population, which is a lower socioeconomic economic population. So they don't have maybe quite the access to prenatal care that everybody else has. Mm -hmm. So our program is really trying to bring it to them. So yes, some of it has changed. And obviously, we're trying to help people understand that protein doesn't just mean go eat a hamburger. There's right. lots of other mm -hmm. proteins. Um, and a prenatal vitamin is still vital and, and definitely part of it. But yes, we're trying to kind of take what we've learned that there's all these complications that are coming from these lower socioeconomic groups with complicated pregnancies, negative outcomes that they're preventable and they're very much based on their nutrition and their health. And if we just can kind of get in there early, give them the tools that they need, 
then we can really impact the outcome and make it safer for them to deliver as much as obviously a healthy baby in the end. How do you counsel your patients just for a you know longevity or, an, or even more important health span, having a healthy lifestyle, not just a long lifespan, but a healthy life, what do you tell them? A Mediterranean style diet is always the first place that I go and then kind of work out from there if there's other restrictions or allergies or things we have to work around. Um, the second part of that is behavior change. At the point of postpartum, now they're trying to lose weight. Again, we're trying to kind of bring that blood pressure back down to normal, get those cholesterol levels within normal range. And so we need to empower them to feel like they have control over this. So for me, when they meet with me, it's not just about the food as much as it about empowering them by allowing them to set goals. Mm -hmm. So we set goals before they walk out of my office. Mm -hmm. And the goals are take my expert advice. And once you get to the end, they're saying to me, this is what I feel like I'm ready to change. This is what I'm ready to do. We put these goals in place, which are very specific and very measurable. So, you know, how many times have you said, I want to eat healthier, I want to exercise more? Yeah. These goals are specific. They're saying, so I. So give me an example of a goal. So, sure. So, and again, it's a starting point, it's not the ending point. Right. So maybe they want to eat better. They're going to say, I want to choose two servings of vegetables per day, five days a week, or I want to cook at home more. So I'm going to limit eating out to one meal per mm -hmm. day, one day per week. Or maybe it's exercise. Again, where am I going to start? Let's start with 15 minutes per day, five days per week. Once they put these goals in place, now I get to celebrate them accomplishing it because they're yeah. measurable. They know if they've done it or not. But it also gives me an opportunity to say, hey, what got in the way? What were those barriers? And, and I can't take the barriers away. Sometimes it's a lack of time or, you know, the other things that were coming up. But I can give them the opportunity to strategize and say, what can I change about my routine? What can I change about my behavior that's going to make this goal more attainable? So for postpartum, it's really about the diet and understanding the balance of nutrition, but also understanding that behavior change that's really necessary for a long term result. That's, that's amazing. So be specific. So I think I think we've covered the gamut. We have preconception, pregnancy, and thereafter. Right. This was really informative and we definitely should have you back on the show. Thank um, you. And uh, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Carrie. And to all of my guests for such a great show. As you learned today, the Women's Heart Wellness Program is a fantastic resource at Catholic Health and we hope you'll take advantage of it. If you would like to know more about Catholic Health or to make a gift in support of one of these amazing programs you heard about today, please visit chsli.org or call 1-855-CHS-4500. Thank you for watching today. I am Dr. Dave Degati, and I'll see you next time on Catholic Health, Stronger Together with Dr. Dave.